Hey up everybody, uh, right I'm just going to take a break from my water tender that I'm building for my loco. Uh, I've been doing that for the past few weeks and uh, I've done, basically I've done up most of the chassis. It's a rolling chassis now and I'll be moving on to tank soon but I'm just going to take a break from that to do a job that I've been meaning to do for well quite a few years now. Before, before I get on to that though, I've had this sticker here from uh, Matty's workshop and uh, Matty's over in Eden, New South Wales, Australia. Um, I've waited a while for that to come. Uh, I think he had to send it twice. Well, the first one must have got lost in post somewhere off at uh, Pacific Ocean or something like that. If you're interested in all this stuff that we do, take a look at Matty's workshop and you'll find a lot of interesting uh, videos on his channel. Right then, what I'm up to then, in between uh, my lo local water tender, many years back, and I've been trying to think how many years it is now, I've got five or six years in my head, but you know how you lose track of time sometimes, it could be ten years. Uh, I made a, a tool and cutter grinding rest for my bench grinder. Now, to cut a long story short, many years back when I, were, when I did that, I was in the process of designing my own uh, attachment for my grinder. And, uh, you know, it, it can get a bit involved, anything like that, because you've got to get all the angles right, etc, etc. Well, while I was in the middle of making my own design up, I came across this book at a car boot sale. It's a workshop practice series number 38, Tool and Cutter Sharpening by Harold Earl. Now, Harold Earl, he must be a really, a really good engineer because having read this book, you know, um, that's the impression I get. Now, in this book, there's a lot of information on tool and cutter grinding, and he also uh, tells you how to make um, a few variations of a tool and cutter grinding attachment for your bench grinder. Now that's got a lot of advantages because A you don't have to go to expense of buying a, a proper tool and cutter grinder or perhaps making one and B it's not taking extra space up in your workshop that you might you know it might be um, that you've got a small workshop and you've not got room for one and uh, a tool and cutter grinder, to be fair to any hobbyist out there, you, you know, it's, it's very rare you use one. It's very rare you need to use one. So why have one stood doing nothing, taking room up, uh, and a probably an expensive bit of kit? Unless you're doing it like professionally, I don't think it's beneficial to have one personally. Anyway... To cut a long story short, when I made this, when I got this book, it also came in the book a set of plans for a more simpler version of the one in of the one or two in his book. And I made the simpler version. And when I say simple, it is simple to make really. Uh, it only took me probably a day or two, and, and it were up and running. But ever since I've made it, there's been a few niggling uh, modifications I want to do to it to make it a little bit more user friendly. Now the reason it's took me this long to do it is because, you know, it's very infrequently used. And the times I use it, I'm in middle, probably in the middle of doing a, a job and I just want to get the cutter ground up and sharpened up and I always think... I must get this modified and then you know it's, it, it slips by me and it never gets done so I'm going to make a concerted effort now to get the um, few modifications done. So I'm not going to be making it from scratch but I'll show you everything about it and I'll show you what I'm doing to modify it and you'll get the gist of it you know from, from what I'm showing you. So let's go over to workbench then and uh, we'll have a closer look at this. Right, I've got all my grinders on this uh, grinding station, I call it. I've got three grinders set up on a rotary table. 
that uh, only take room up are probably what one grinder would take if it were on the edge of your bench. I did that in another video if you're interested in that. But I've got me, me I've got a buffing wheel on one, I've got my green wheel on the other, I've got a, a general purpose one on that, I've got my sanding belt on that one, and my tool and cutter grinders bolted to, to this one. So uh, let's uh, spin it round and have a look what we're, what we're going to do. I'll just turn that light off because it might be dazzling you. Briefer then, what you've got, you've got an arm coming off these two bolts that fit to your guard on your on your wheel over your wheel. You utilise them two bolts, you come off this these two bolts with a horizontal piece of bar or flat bar, and on that flat bar you drill various holes in various positions to get your table fitted to the to the required angles. I'll explain it better over on workbench. So that's your table, it's just a piece of angle with a slot in it. And then on the table you've got the the actual depth adjuster for putting the depth of cut on to the to the cutters at the various angles that you need. You can also adjust this on these holes, either in or out, to get different length cutters on. And uh, once you've got that set, all you do, you've got a square block to put your cutters in, and in that square block you'll put different adapters to get your different sized diameter cutters in. That goes up to the stop and then that, that enables you to cut your primary angle and your secondary angle on the front of your end mill or slot mill. We're not going to be grinding the flutes, this is just purely to do the ends because that's mainly uh, the part that gets blunt first. Now the this works fine, it's just a bit, it's a bit annoying to me anyway, it's a bit annoying because it wants a few modifications do it to make it more user friendly. So it, at the moment it's set for the primary angle. So to get the secondary angle you've got to tilt this down and you've got to undo, undo these two bolts and they've got a nut on the back. Now this is what it tells you to do on the drawing. So it's a bit, a bit time consuming to keep on doing all the the bolts and the nuts and moving everything so I'm going to I'm going to approach that in a different way and then uh, the depth in adapter there's a slot in the table and there's four holes in the adapter and you can move that in or out for different length cutters and what holds that in is just a bolt a cap screw with a plate on the bottom to act as a nut and you've got to use your allen key then to keep tightening everything up and moving everything around and taking it off etc so that's annoying me at the moment and also when you put your depth of cut on that's using this allen key in this cap head screw moves this in and out to put your depth of cut on. So you've got to keep picking the allen key up, putting a little bit of cut on, etc. So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to, I'm going to remove these screws, I'm going to make a another table. The reason I'm going to make another table is because I made this out of aluminium and the steel on the aluminium is just starting to drag a little bit. It feels smooth but it's not got a it's just dragging a little bit. I think it wants to be made of steel, this table. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make another table. And these nuts and bolts that hold the table on, I'm going to actually thread the part that these go into and make some little thumb screws. So it's 
easier to move the table to its primary angle and its secondary angle on these holes here. So that's another modification. Uh, <coughs> then the actual moving around of this block that puts the cut on, again you have to use an allen key. <coughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a slot in that instead of four holes. I'm going to put a recess in the bottom of the slot on the table with a nut that fits in the recess and then I'm going to make a thumb screw that fits in this slot then so I just have to loosen the screw with me with my fingers and then I'm able to move this up, up and down left and right tighten up and then job's done and same with this one here to put the cut on you've got to use an allen key to keep turning a little bit of cut on so I'm going to make a, a knurled thumb screw for that and doing all them things combined I'll probably be able to grind my cutters uh, twice as quick that's the main part that usually gets blunt, blunt the ends the primary angle and the secondary angle on the ends of the end mill or the slot mill so let's take a look at the workbench and what I'm going to do to this table then uh. 